You don't need a perfect model to boost your business. In this video, I will show you three strategies to transform poor machine learning models into money-making machines. Hi, welcome to another AI shot. I am Kelvin Fernandez, father of one boy, one dog, and hundreds of machine learning models. And in this video, I will show you how some of my machine learning kids failed at the school. They had very bad grades, but they succeed on life. Okay, so they, they achieve uh, large optimizations okay so in this video we'll show you three examples where this happened and also three strategies to identify that this is happening and to solve it okay so stay until the end of the video so let's start with the, with the examples the first is example was a model that we were building just to route traffic to certain assets so we were basically trying to predict if a certain product was going to be sold in the next week or in the next 15 days okay the probability of this happened and the model that we built at like a very bad predictive performance. I mean, 50% raw KOC is random, okay? So we were achieving like 60%. So it was very mediocre model, okay? It was not good at all. You know, the, the client was always pushing us like, we need to improve the performance, we need to improve the performance, we need to improve the performance. And then we just, you know, gave a step back and we say, well, let's see what happens on the tails of the model. Let's see what happens on the cases the model says, these are going to be sold for sure. And the cases that the model says, you know, these won't be sold at all. And what happened is that on those two tails, like the top 10% predictions and the bottom 10% predictions had very high uh, predictive performance. So the model was actually very good on those. Overall, it was garbage, okay? Overall, it was very mediocre, but on those tails, the model had a very good discriminative power, okay? And those tails were already optimizing millions of dollars. So it was already good enough. So we moved to production, everybody happy, and then we had cash flow to actually work on solving the big problem, okay? The second example is was on the healthcare domain. Again, actually we applied the same solution. So the model was not actually poor. So if, it, if in the other, you know, we had a raw KUC of 60%, remember 50 is random, 60% is a bit better. We were like in 80, okay? So we were kind of reasonably good, but of course we wanted more. We wanted to, you know, to say the model had a, be a better performance. So what we did here is again, looking at the tails. So we know that on the overall population, we had an 80% AUC, uh, rock AUC performance. What happens on the extremes? What happens on the cases that the model is saying, you know, the model is quite sure that this patient has the disease. And on these cases, the model is quite sure that, that the patient is healthy, okay? What happened there is that you know, only the predictive performance on those, the rock AUC was like 90 something percent. So it was way higher than in the overall population. And it was still optimizing a lot of the, a lot of patients. So the model was still able to take, you know, a bunch of patients out of the queue because they were healthy. So we don't have to, to go over the entire process. We save resources and we gave higher priority to those patients that were actually in a severe condition. So we, we prioritize them sooner, right? Again, same concept. The model was not good in the overall, I mean, the, uh, globally, but on the tails, it was already optimizing a lot of value. Okay, so the, thir the third example I want to bring you was recommendation system. Okay, we build a, a lot of, we work a lot on marketing, CRM domains, and a recommender system is like a recurrent project that we always face. And in this case, the model was actually good on recurring customers. Okay, so the model was good on understanding the behaviors and the trends, the purchase trends of customers that already purchased something in the past. However, for newcomers, the model was terrible. I mean, it was terrible. It was even worse than random, I would say. Um, but as soon as, this, as the user started buying stuff, the model became actually very good. Of course, the, model, the, the client said, it's like, you know, we, we need to have a good model that works always. But here, our approach was like this. Well, if we are not good, like in the global population, let's just make some profit out of this segment, the segment of recurring customers. You know, we didn't have to change the model. The model was already built. We just need to, we just needed to say, well, let's do some pilots, you know, on these recurring customers. Let's save us from the call start issue, okay? Which is, you know, we don't know what the what the other customers will buy because we don't know anything about them at this point. And let's just put this model in production. Again, in this case, what we did was retargeting the model. So we started with a vision of a project that was going to build a recommender system for the entire population. Down the road, we realized that the model was good on a segment, on a sub-segment of the population, not on the overall customer base, but on a segment. And that segment was already large enough 
to allow us to say, you know what, let's put the model in production, let's you know optimize this, let's get some additional revenue, let's produce some cash flow to keep working on solving the larger case. Okay, so three examples, two of them, we just look at details. The other one, we just uh, retarget the, the project. Let's now move to the strategies. So the first strategy is always look at the details. If you have a, pre a model and the model is not as good as you, as you would like to, look at the details. The, the top cases with the highest probabilities and the, the bottom ones. This problem technically is known as a reject option and there are some fancy tools to do this, some fancy algorithms to do this, but overall, if you can just focus on the tails and optimize enough value out of it, then you should go for that, okay? And then the second strategy that I want to bring you is, you know, retarget your model. If your model is quite good at predicting, you know, um, why the flight tickets demand on a cert from a certain country and not from the rest, then let then just you know dig a bit on that on that market on that segment. Let's just retarget our model from the overall population that we initially wanted to build to that segment to that market, and maybe that already brings us some good performance, bring us cash flow that will actually fund the long term uh, vision of the project. Okay, look at the tails, retarget your model. And the third strategy, and more than a strategy, I will say it is like a mindset, is ignore your technical KPIs. What do I mean by technical KPIs? Rock AUC, accuracy, precision, etc. Focus on the business KPIs. How much money are you producing? How many customers are you saving? How many patients are you saving? You know, how many errors are you preventing on your on your manufacturing lane, okay? So focus on the business use case, on the business metrics, because maybe you already have value out of it. If you don't know what do I mean by business or technical metrics, look at our data night methodology, okay? It's on the link on the description. So now you know the three examples with the three strategies. If you like this content, like, subscribe, and activate the notifications. And also, if you like this video, there is another one where I cover the opposite examples. So how an accurate model can be garbage if they don't provide good decision support. Thank you guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.